dropping in. This video is going to cover how I model 3D printable torsion springs in Fusion 360. Torsion springs, both coiled and spiral shaped, are extremely versatile. You may see them in mini clips, clock mechanisms, wind up toys, or other small gadgets. They're also an important part of my twist lock box designs, where they force the locking mechanism shut when it's not actively engaged. Unfortunately, Fusion 360 lacks a direct method to model this mechanism, but with a few tricks, we can easily generate spiral torsion springs that would be suitable for 3D printed designs. Let's get to modeling. Fusion 360 works off of two-dimensional blueprints called sketches, so the obvious first step would be to create a new sketch and then draw a spiral on that. I'll just click the Create Sketch button and click the spiral tool to... Okay, here's the problem. Fusion 360 doesn't have a spiral tool. Kind of a weird omission, but it's true. We could use a spline tool to rough out a spiral, but that would look pretty lumpy. We could construct a spiral mathematically, but that takes a lot of time. We could import a spiral as an SVG from some other program, but that wouldn't be able to be adjusted. I want a solution that's accurate fast and easy to modify, preferably without using another program or a plugin. So let's trick Fusion 360 into making a spiral for us. Even though it's blasphemy, this trick doesn't start with a 2D sketch. Instead, we're going to use the coil tool, which you can find in the create menu under the solids tab. To start the coil, select a plane for it to build off of and its center point. I'm going to use the top plane and the document's origin. We also need to provide a coil diameter. Let's use 50 millimeters for now. We can easily change it later. This generates a generic coil and displays a coil menu. Let's try the following settings. Section size, two millimeters. This is the width of the wire that makes the coil and it will eventually become the width of the arms for our torsion spring. Section position, inside. This pushes the spiral inside the coil diameter we defined earlier. Section shape, square. This defines the shape that's running around the coil. Square gives the coil some sharp edges that will be useful later. Height, 50 millimeters. Since we plan on making this a flat spiral, this setting might not make sense yet, but if it's too tall or too short, it'll cause trouble later. I just set the coil height to match the coil diameter. So that's where we come up with 50 millimeters. The next option is the most important, angle negative 20 degrees. This gives the coil a taper. The further up the coil goes, the closer it gets to the center. If we switch to an overhead view, you'll see we're finally making progress. Okay, we have a tapered coil, but it's not the spiral spring we're looking for. It's time to flatten it out. Let's start a new sketch on the top plane. Next, we're going to use the project tool when you select the three-dimensional coil, this will make a two-dimensional tracing of that shape onto the sketch. Hide the coil and you're left with just a two-dimensional spiral. If you don't like how the spiral looks, it's super easy to adjust. The bottom of the screen has a timeline for every step we've taken while creating this model. Just right-click on the coil icon and select Edit Feature. This brings up the coil menu from before so we can easily tweak the coil's attributes. Once you've adjusted what you want to change, hit enter and the sketch will update as well. Let's go back into the sketch. I want to add a few elements to the spiral that will act as connection points to the model we're building. First, I'm going to extend the outer arm. This isn't strictly necessary, but I'm also adding a tangent constraint to these lines, so the extended arm flows perfectly from the spiral. Next, I'm adding a central cord to the spiral with a hexagonal hole. This will help it mesh with a hexagonal axle and keep the spring from just slipping when it's under force. Once that's done, let's close the sketch and use the extrude tool to turn this into a solid that can be 3D printed. A taller spring will have less side-to-side -side movement and be a little more stiff than a short spring. Finally, and this is mostly aesthetic, I'm going to add a small fillet to the sharp edge within the coil. I just like how that looks better. Okay, it's time to test print the result. 
In your slicing software, you should see a preview of the object. As I review the design, layer by layer, I'm seeing a lot of infill inside the spring arms. This isn't good for a torsion spring. Infill won't flex easily and results in inconsistent stiff areas. To fix that, I could increase the number of perimeter lines until the spring is entirely solid. But in this case, I actually want to reduce the thickness of the arms. So I'll jump back into Fusion 360 and make a few more changes. And here it is, the completed 3D printed spring. But I couldn't close out this video without turning it into a project of some sort. So I created a few more parts. and designed this wall-mounted cat toy. It's completely compatible with my spring latch system. Sadly, the 3D Printy Kitty is not one to play while the camera's running. So instead, enjoy this clip where she spends eight minutes pointedly ignoring her favorite toy attachment. But don't be fooled by her feigned disinterest. I added a bell onto this thing and I know it's getting some use. So until next time, Happy printing and thanks for stopping by. Gotcha. <laughs>